Let me review a really excellent Western movie called The Hostiles with Christian Bale. And first of all, this is an excellent movie. Christian Bale, in my humble opinion, does an absolute fantastic acting job. Academy Award winning caliber. The sporting actors are great. The cinematography is outstanding. The costume is outstanding. Excellent um, script. But within the first four minutes, I realized there are many, many prepper lessons and disaster preparedness lessons. So, spoiler alert, I'm going to talk about, in somewhat detail, the first four minutes. And then I'll largely leave you alone to enjoy the movie, and I would highly recommend it. First of all, let me show you the layout of the first scene. We have a frontier cabin, and this is supposed to be taking place in 1892. A small shed, perhaps a horse stable, a fence. Behind that is a mountain covered with uh, forest trees. Over towards the right, another mountain, heavily forest. The homesteader is located outside in front of the cabin. When he sees probably three to four hundred yards away. Six mounted Comanches. First at a walk and then moving to a trot. They pulled their pistols out and began to shoot. At that minute, the homesteader realizes kill or be killed. He realizes the gratitude of what is coming at him but he hesitates. He stands there in sort of an, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I can't believe what I'm seeing. And then he runs into the house to retrieve his rifle. He tells his wife what is happening. He then goes to the window. His wife at that point tells the children, remember our plan. But then she, with him standing by the window, watching them close in, asking to change the plan, says, come with us. And she repeatedly does this, um, re requesting to change their plan, which they have pre-thought out. And there is a touch of endearment along with that. But in summary, it was... Sweetheart, you're arguing with me while six marauders are closing on us with pistols firing. She needed to be executing the plan. Finally, she gets the children. Two older uh, daughters, one nine or ten, the other one uh, eleven or twelve, a baby. They do have a short scene before this begins in the early part of the four minutes where the children are being schooled. And you can tell the two children are quite articulate, quite intelligent, and capable. And so is she. They then make a dash for the mountain in the, in the rear of the house. However, she stops here as the Indians close in on her husband. He runs outside of the house. I don't know, understand why he did that. He runs back out in front of the house, takes a Winchester, and he's just banging away with his uh, Winchester. You don't see any hits being registered. She pauses here while they finally close on him, and it doesn't end well for him. And then finally, she turns and runs for the mountain, and things don't turn out well for the family. Now, what are the lessons learned? First of all, number one is when he hesitated with the oh my gosh moment. If you have an emergency, particularly one such as this or a home invasion, you've got to remove the hesitancy part of the cycle time. You've got to be acting. He should have immediately put his plan in place to get his rifle at that point. <clears throat> Number two is he didn't have his gun with him. He had to run into the house. Now, 
most of us in the modern world, we don't need to be carrying a gun with us all the time. But in an emergency, you should be keeping your gun pretty close. Now, I live in the middle of a forest. It's summertime and we have a black bear infestation. So as I'm filming this, here's my gun. So keep your gun close. Number three, he had no emergency signal. And the best type of signal I think is auditory because it permetrates the whole area. In his case, I think the auditory emergency signal should have been him opening fire on the hostiles. Give you a pragmatic modern example with my bear example. We have these air horns in a number of places on our property. We even have little small ones you can stick in your pocket. So yeah, if I push on this, one, <clears throat> the bears are actually quite uh, shy and they just see you and they walk away. But if you blow a horn, it's motivating them to leave. But it also signals my wife, there is a bear close by. Don't come out of the house or if you do, bring a gun with you. And he should have had something similar, probably the gunfire. Number four is his wife's hesitancy. She's arguing with him about, remember our plan. No. In hindsight, I don't think they had a good plan, but if that was their plan, as soon as she knew of the danger, she should have been out and running. Number five is he gives up his cover. He's inside a log cabin. Now this is 1892. They're not shooting armor piercer from bullets. I would think a log cabin would give you some ballistics um, protection. He should have stayed in the cabin. He should have taken advantage that he could rest his Winchester on the window sill to get more accurate fire. And he should have been putting some lead down the range. <clears throat> Number six is the accuracy of his rifle and his shooting. He didn't, he didn't hit anybody. This guy needed to go to the range more often. Also, as I mentioned, if he was in the cabin, he should have used the window seal as a, uh, to steady his rifle. If he was outside, he should have pre-planned to have some uh, a revetment built or had uh, some stone walls, something to give him protection if he was going to fight from outside his house, which often is the best way to protect your house in a situation like this. <clears throat> or at the very least, drop to a kneeling position or even better, drop to a prone, a laying down position where he presents a smaller footprint as a target for the hostiles. So he should have had cover. He had it should have had more accurate gunfire. Number seven, she stops and looks back on the carnage. No, keep running. Don't uh, hesitate. Don't look back. Now, there was also some uh, strategic mistakes made here. One was why are they in such an isolated position? Um, it would have been best if there were other homesteads located close by that when they heard this rapid fire gunfire from a Winchester and pistol shots, they would have known we've got a problem over at their homestead. Let's minute man up and get over there and help them. So you don't want to be in a totally isolated position. Number nine, the two children were totally capable of being taught how to shoot and the wife. Now, I'll be honest with you. If times are normal uh, with my children, I was open to take them out and show them how to safely shoot a gun and shoot it accurately when they were about 16 years old. And the guns were always locked up. Now, once they're 
18 and they're out on their own, I guess they can hopefully use firearms responsibly. Now, this is not normal times. This is 1892 and apparently there's still Comanches around to do evil things to you. So these two girls should have been trained how to shoot a carbine. The wife should have been able to shoot a carbine. And in our scenario, I mean, the diagram is falling down, but there should have had a couple windows and a place in the door that could be a gun portal. Now we've really changed things. So the husband's outside with a Winchester blasting away, and you've got three women inside who are blasting away with, I'd suggest for that age, Winchesters. <clears throat> they might have wanted to have a, a couple double barrel shotguns handy too. Because let me tell you, when you get close up, a double barrel 12 gauge with double O, it's shock and awe. And that could have come in handy in this situation. So those are nine lessons. Now the last one I'd submit <clears throat> comes later in the movie. But it's where one group of people and a second group of people are having a standoff. And a brinksmanship of do they shoot it out there. Well, I have to defer to my father, who was a combat veteran of the 3rd Infantry Division in World War II. And we used to watch the old movie sh uh, TV show Gunsmoke, and he said, you would have to be absolutely crazy to walk out in the street and give a, the other guy an equal chance to shoot you. He says, the best way to have a gunfight You'd see the Nazi, he didn't see you, you put your gun sight on him and did a steady squeeze. And the Nazi didn't even know what hit him. He says another good way to have a gun fight is you'd see one or two Nazis and your whole squad was with you. You had eight to ten guys loaded for bear. He says you're probably expecting a good outcome to that gun fight. So the idea of facing off with equal terms don't put yourself in that position. And if possible, if you can extricate yourself from it, uh, do so. So here's 10 lessons of the movie Hostiles. <coughs> I think these, these lessons directly apply to us. Is in an emergency, pre-think it out. Don't have hesitancy. A few weeks ago, I'm driving along there's a car in front of me on a two-lane highway, and thankfully there was a wide shoulder. The car in front of me pulls over real quick to the right, and I'm like, onto the shoulder, and I'm like, what the heck? And then right in front of me, I see a car just barreling towards me. There was no hesitancy. I was right over on the shoulder with him. I had pre-thought that one out, and missed by one or two seconds, having a collision there, head, in, head on to head on, which is no way to have an accident. Number two, keep your guns close. Now, even when I lived in a upscale subdivision, I kept a pistol upstairs and one downstairs. <clears throat> now, this was after we were empty nesters. Three is having an emergency signal plan. I'm not going to share you our emergency signal plans here where I live, but the idea of the air horn, gunshots, punching down on your panic uh, button for your car and have the car alarm go off. It doesn't have to be that you're in an alarm with your car. Maybe somebody's breaking in your house. Four, any plans you have, pre-work it out with your wife. You're going to work as a team and not argue about how we change the plan when uh, a world hurt is coming down on you. Five is, uh, in any gunfight, you want to look for cover. <clears throat> and at the very least, some concealment. And usually the cover comes with concealment because you can't see through it. And as my father used to say, cover is not a tree. It's a stone wall. It's a concrete wall. Something pretty sturdy that'll stop a big rifle round. <clears throat> Make sure you know how to use your rifle uh, proficiently. Seven is don't hesitate for the horror of the situation you're dealing with. When I was a Navy CB, 
in our military training, they would practice it over and over and over again so that you basically, uh, when you were in that situation, would be executing to what you had been trained to do and not taking the time to think about the horror of what you were dealing with. There's an old Navy saying, train like you're going to fight and fight like you trained. Number eight, why so isolated? You don't want a homestead or a location where regardless of the gunshots and the car alarm going off, nobody can even hear you. You want to be in a place where you do have neighbors, you want to get to know them, and perhaps even have a predetermined uh, audio signal that something is wrong. Come over here and help us. Number nine was having the two daughters and the wife be capable and equipped to use firearms. Well, the equivalent in the modern world is there too. Each member of your family, your team, your group should be trained and equipped to the highest level of their competency in certain key areas, such as firearms, first aid, purifying water. Number 10 is do not get involved with some standoff where things are equal, where there's one group and then there's you, and if it boils over and to a trigger point, everybody's equal. No, back down, extricate yourself. In the modern world, and even in the old west, getting in a gunfight is a serious matter. And legally, in today's environment, at least in the area I live in, about the only 100% sure thing you could be is if you truly believe and can prove in a court of law that it was killed or be killed. You don't shoot somebody because they were trespassing or even taking property of yours. So be prepared. Mm -hmm.